Darlene, and I have Parkinson's. I'm supposed to be doing a day in the life, or how was my day going today? And I forgot to start this morning. So my day is half gone. I've gone to the lab, and I'm just going to get some blood work done. Bill's here, he's doing his as well. And uh, then we'll I'm be- I'm just here for decoration and driving. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Dad, give a wave. So this is the official start of the, of the video, and I will tell you what I'm doing when I get home. All right. Hi there, everybody. Just thought I'd let you all know that at the end of this video, I'm going to insert a picture of my brother. So for anybody who hasn't seen him before, hang on to the end and you'll see a picture of him. I'm going to show a picture just of him, and then I'm going to show a picture that was a few years old, but it's both my brothers and myself when we were all together. So I'm going to put that at the very end. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm home. All right. So we went and had our blood done this morning. And... Uh, they were very good. They were very good about getting it this time. I, I usually get poked two or three times. And this guy was very good about getting it. And Claudine just held my arm down so that they could do it when I'm wiggly and whatnot. But the wind outside today is unbelievable. It's just so windy. And uh, she said, when she went out to let the dog out, she stepped onto the step and she said, nearly blew her away. And then... Um, uh, Bill, when he was getting into the car, he said the door kept pushing closed on him, so it was very, very windy. Anyway, I'm a little bit out of breath today. That's because I've, for whatever reason, I'm very animated. I'm moving around a lot today. I don't know why that is, but anyway, that's what's happening. And um, let's see, I'm not, I have a bunch of stuff to do, but it's boring stuff for everybody to watch. Um, I'm going to do some paperwork. When I say paperwork, I make jobs for myself to keep my brain active. I will write down plans for things and organizations and I'll draw pictures of pantries and where things should be and stuff like that and I enjoy doing that. I don't enjoy maybe getting up and doing that cleaning and the organizing but if I've got a plan I can work towards it. So I've got that to do. I've got supper to make. And, uh, what else have I got written down here? Uh, oh yes, I want to do a menu plan and a shopping list for this next coming up week. And just get things organized a little bit. And I have a hilarious story today to tell. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it justice. It's a story that, it's not my story, it's my brother's story, Gary. And, um... I wasn't sure of all the details, so I phoned him last night, and the two of us roared when he was telling me this story. And I said to him, I'm never going to get these details right, but I'm going to do my best. He'll tell me if I didn't get it right, but I'm going to do my best. Okay, there was a time uh, a while back that uh, he came to live with us, not really live with us. He came to see if he liked living in Calgary, and then he was going to get his own place. But in the meantime, he was going to live with, Claudine was in the upstairs of a, of a home. We were in the downstairs of a home, the same home. And so he came and he stayed. I think he stayed in the upstairs. Yes, he did. He stayed in the upstairs with Claudine. Anyway, he was there. Well, he tried it for a while and didn't really, really like it. He, you know, he missed all his friends. They were all back in Vancouver. <coughs> Excuse me. So he decided he was going to go back. But he had quite a bit of stuff, and I, I think that's why Ross was coming out to go back and help him take his stuff back. Excuse me, I'm thirsty. So anyway, they had the two vehicles. So they, Gary had his vehicle, Ross had his vehicle. Now, to get from where Mom and Dad were with Gary out to Calgary, you have to cross the mountains, the Rockies. So anyway, Ross drove out. He has, uh, you know, his old vehicle, but it was... Not a grand vehicle, it was an older vehicle, but he made it just fine and they got loaded up. They're halfway home. They're literally halfway home. Halfway between the two, there's a place called the Last Spike, and it's where the last railway spike was put in when the, the Cross Canada Railway was being built. And that was where the last spike went in. So there's a rest area and a nice park and whatnot there. So that's the halfway point. That's just outside Revelstoke. Well, just outside Revelstoke, they were going down the road, and Ross was in front. And all of a sudden, Gary sees Ross's vehicle kind of glump over to the side, and he limped over to the, the sandy 
uh, shoulder, and Gary stopped behind him to see what was going on. Ross said his tire had come off of the car while he was driving on his mountainous road. The tire came off and went straight down the road. It was a downhill. It went straight down the road and off the edge. Thankfully, it never hit anybody that they know of. I mean, it probably hit a tree on the way down this over over mountainous overpass bank. Anywho, he didn't have the tire. Now, he Gary says, well, do you have a spare? He says, oh, well, I've got a little donut. And Gary said, well, I'm going to have to get that on it. So then they got out to put the donut on and noticed that the tire had fallen off. But not only that, the tire had sheared off the lug nuts. So there was no lug nuts. So they couldn't put this donut on without lug nuts. So Gary said, well, we're going to have to go back into Revelstoke and try and find this. So um, they he got into Gary's vehicle, I guess, and they drove back. I'm not sure, but anyway, I think that Gary, they drove back in Gary's vehicle. I think that's what it was. But anyway, they went back. The stores were closed. So they slept for a while, I guess, in their vehicle. And then they went in when the store was open and uh, got what they had could for these lug nuts. They only had two. You need four. And so they got the two, went back to the car with the two lug nuts, and they said then they realized that they didn't have a tool to take off the brake caliper. And apparently the brake caliper had to come off too. I know nothing about mechanics. So if you know about mechanics, you'll maybe understand it or know where I'm going wrong in my story. But anyway, they they took the, the brake. Oh, Ross put his hands up underneath. He was going to try and take this brake caliper off with this tool that was on the jack. And he said it's the right size wrench or something that he needed. And so he was going to go up there. And then he said, oh, it's all bent. I've got to pull it and sort of bend it the other way. And Gary said, you'll never, that's metal. Like, you're never going to be able to pull that. Well, next thing you know, he pulled it. It broke off. So anyway, now they've got this piece broken off and two lug nuts. But now the wheel will go on. So they put the little donut on, attached it by two lug nuts. And then they had to try and get home. Then the car kept overheating. They were going on a big hill by Merritt, and the car just kept overheating on him. So they had to, again, go into town, get water, bring it back out, and keep putting water in until they, they finally limped home, I guess, on this donut. But I said to him, I said, can you imagine if you were sitting in your car, your car tipped over and you watched your tire go down the road in front of you? And luckily, it never hit anybody. But we just roared when I said to Gary, I said, oh my goodness, I said, the things that we have had go on. Bill and I had a brake caliper stick on us on a New Year's Eve in Clinton. And it was a little tiny town. We had no money. We were on our way home after visiting my parents for Christmas. I, I've told that story before. It was a nightmare for us. Let me tell you, it was a nightmare. Anywho, um, now that's my story for today. Um, how does my day go? My day's going fine. Like, I, I don't have a problem with my day. But I didn't get accomplishing much. But I did, I needed to have the lab work done. And I, um, and Bill needed to have the lab work done because he has a doctor's appointment coming up. Oh, I have, I have big news. I have big news. Claudine saw the surgeon. The surgeon said, most definitely, you need this surgery. You you absolutely have to have this surgery. And it won't be that long, he said. He said that he thinks within a month he'll have, have her in for the surgery. Now, she won't be able to get the the whole surgery with the, you know, cutting off, like the tummy tuck part of it, you know, put, cutting that off. So she said she's a little bummed about the fact that she'll have, you know, lots of scars and stuff on her belly. But he isn't going to just do the hernia. <coughs> Excuse me, just a moment. Sorry, I choked a little bit there. He's not going to just do the hernia. He's going to put the mesh in and do the actual repair. And that's... Now, she said she's going to have a hard recovery. He has said to her it's eight weeks recovery. Um, and so she says that's all summer. I won't be able to be out doing a lot of walking of the dog and you know all my summer is sort of gone and I said you'll look forward to the fall honey I said just you know you'll look forward to the fall but 
we are so thankful that he is going to do this surgery. And she said he's a very nice man. It's at the hospital she wants. And she's much happier with that. And I cannot believe how long she has waited to have this surgery. So I was so relieved when he said, yes, I will be glad when it's done because I, the poor girl, she honestly, she, she looks like she's pregnant. She has a, a great big belly. Her, what did she say? Nine, nine or 10 inches that it's, it's grown nine or 10 inches. Her, her a measurement around in, in the last month, like it's terrible like and she has to wear like a, a belt to support the weight because her back and shoulders she it pulls her forward it's it's like she's pregnant it's like she's ready to deliver a baby you know it's and and if you touch it like her skin is starting to pull apart it's you know like down the incision scar um it's it's really sore and if you put your hands there, I said, it's, you can feel the heat radiating and you, you know, it's, it's just scary. So I'm glad she's going to get that done. So I guess that's pretty much an update on everything that's happening. And, um, so on that note, I am going to, what am I going to do today? Oh, see, I'm, I'm bit, I'm in a bit of a brain fog today too. I don't know why that is. Anyway, I'm on the wiggle. And I'm in a bit of a brain fog. So I'm going to say cheerio for now. Hey, I should say that every day. Cheerio for now. I used to sign all my letters when I was writing my cousins in Ireland. I would write cheerio for now at the bottom. Maybe I'll try that out. What do you think? Should I say cheerio every day? No. Nah. I'll, I'll just say see you tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Bye.